Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to be giving you my Kateb review where I give you some demos, tutorials, and highlight some of the best features that this AI writing software has to offer. At the time of creating this video, they do currently have a very special deal. I will leave a link in the description and if you click that, you can get all the details for that, the special pricing, the perks, the features. I don't like talking about stuff like that because eventually it goes away and then of course when it's not there, it might confuse you in the future. So be sure to check that out to get all the special deals. First and foremost, let's go with the article generation. So there is the ability to create long form articles. Doesn't always have to be 2000 plus words can be a little bit less, but I'm using this as an example. Are DVDs worth buying? Let's click on generate full article. And what it's going to do is give you some topics that you can utilize. And what I mean by topics is these will kind of be these sub headlines for you. So we have our title already. And what you can do is go through and say, do I like any of these? Do I like some of these? You can move them around. You can change them. So why physical media still matters, uh, DVDs versus Blu-rays, the cost comparison, how it saves you money are still higher than Blu-ray. I'd say I don't like the way that's worded. The upscaling advantage, uh, why hard drives and clouds, and let's take that out. New releases and rare titles, why they still have perks, control over the ownership, uh, just doesn't cut it, and the collectible factor. I think all these look good. They're related. And like I said, you can always add another topic. Tone of voice is going to be friendly. Let's change that around to just matter of fact. Third person is fine. Type of paragraph or content is going to be paragraph. You can do how to product reviews, but this is going to be good. I don't want to attach any images. I think they'll do just fine with that. So now that we have our title and our topics, those are the two things you're going to need for it to create content. So let's click on generate and I'll be back when it's done. All right, so here's gonna be our content. Also one thing you'll notice, or I've probably noticed in the past is that you'll probably wanna remove the numbers. Sometimes it'll have the subtitles there, sometimes it won't. It also has references on the bottom and there's a ton of them. But I'm just gonna go over some of this just so you can kind of see the quality. Uh, are DVDs worth buying in this age of streaming services and digital downloads? As technology advances, more and more people are turning away from physical media in favor of online options. However, there are still those who prefer the tangible experience of owning a physical copy of their favorite movies and TV shows. So the question remains, is it worth investing your hard-earned money in DVDs in this blog post? Yada, yada, yada. So... Uh, while streaming has become a popular way to watch movies, they remain a cheap and reliable option. They are typically more affordable than Blu-rays and can be played on a wide range of devices. Uh, so talking about that, how streaming has a disadvantage compared to it. You own it. They can't take it away. Let's see. Moving on to other reasons. It allows for better quality movie watching experiences compared to streaming services. I guess that's debatable, right? Furthermore, they offer additional benefits for movie enthusiasts. The benefits of owning them. Let's see, owning is still valuable. It's still worth it. Not only are they cheaper, but okay. According to factual data, DVDs continue to hold a significant place in the world of film and media consumption. I think that is true. You don't have to fact check that, okay? And section 10. So one thing I'd probably just add a conclusion to this, okay? And it's funny, this is gonna be my next example, but it just happens to be in there. If you're wondering why this is in here, because I wrote it in my other tab. So references, let's take a look at this. So. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about with references because one of the big things about Kateb is their fact checking aspect. So you'll notice here, there's going to be some good references like Business Insider, maybe How To Geek, but then we have Reddit and we have Quora. Okay, this came up before and while it is a reference, it's probably not going to be a reference you're going to want to use, of course, because anyone can create a username on Reddit or Quora. It's pretty much a social media platform where people talk, answer questions, and just imagine getting <laughs> your reference from John Doe on Quora, who has two posts and knows nothing exactly about this specific topic. They just decided to answer it because they had nothing better to do. Not exactly going to be the best reference. And I can scroll down a little bit better. Like Screen Rant's good, uh, Quora, Quora. Uh, some a lot of other things and so on and so forth. So while it is cool that there are references, sometimes you're going to need to like fact check the fact checker or at least check out the references if you get what I mean. So neat little aspect there. Overall, the quality of the content is I'd say good. It's not something where I, I saw it and I did backflips for, you know, it'll get the job done. Sometimes it's a little repetitive in terms of talking about, well, DVDs are worth the investment. They provide a lot of value. Like it's stated multiple times over. I think it could be cleaned up a little bit in terms of like what we had here in terms of the actual headline there instead of one, two, three, five, seven, and so on and so forth. So that's how it works when it comes to creating a long article. I will say that it is a little bit tougher to get like pinpoint amazing content when you're doing a longer article and you give it less input. 
while you can enter in the topics. I'm usually more of a fan of just starting with an outline, going from an intro, and then doing each specific section, but to each their own, okay? So keep that in mind. Next, now that we know we're talking about Tiger Woods, this is where we get to actually look at more of the fact-checking type of stuff. So they put why Tiger Woods is one of the best golfers to ever play the game based on his achievements alone. So this is a little bit more factual because we're talking about stats, maybe dates, maybe how many wins he's had. So this is what I'm going to go with. Uh, friendly, third person. I want to go with a news report as if we're, you know, giving news about Tiger Woods. Let's click on generate and I will be right back in a sec. All right, so there we have it. So one of the most famous golf players, 25 years after he made his PGA Tour debut at the Greater Milwaukee Open. The California native has won all four professional major championships in a row, accomplishing the feat in the 2000-2001 seasons. Uh, major championship wins and 82 PGA Tour titles places him third on the list of the most winning golfers in PGA history. You'll notice we have a lot of like facts and dates here. Here are going to be some of the references. These look a lot better like Tiger Woods biography, Golf Digest. Uh, let's see who else we got here. A lot of good golf stuff like Wikipedia. Like I said, that can be edited. Bleacher Report, you know, golf.com is good. Britannica, NCAA, and so on and so forth. So here's another cool thing when it comes to references and overall fact checking. What we can do is I have another tab open. This is going to be called the Credible Writer. So instead of maybe getting random references, what I did is I have the same exact brief description here where we want to fact check it. I have news report. But what we can do is I found an article online right here talking about Tiger Woods, and it actually talks about his achievements specifically. So what I can do is have this generated based upon this specific reference right here. That way we're not going to get Quora or Reddit or, you know, who knows what, right? So I'm going to click on generate and then I'll get back to you in a sec. Okay, so he's won 82 PGA Tour events, tied for the most in history with Sam Snead. He's also won 15 major championships, second only to Jack Nicklaus. He has spent a record eight, or 683 weeks at the top. Uh, let's see, he's won four Masters tournaments, player of the year 11 times. So what I want to do is just kind of see, let's see, career wins 82 and right here. And in case you didn't see that, uh, right here. So this is kind of fact checking it and making sure 15 major championships. Let's see if I can like just do, doesn't have that there. That's fine. Is it, let's see, major championships, major, okay. So it's not taking up everything or what it does is counting it manually, which I don't want to do because it'll take some time, but that's fine. Let's see. Second only, he is a record 683 PGA player of the year. Let's see. Am I missing that? Player, player's championship. Okay. And of course, tied second most in history is impact on the sport and dominance. Okay, so let's change this around and let's say we want to go for like a specific stat. And let's say based on his, let's do official money made and how much it is, you know, let's generate. Okay, perfect. So 120.8 mil and there we go. Okay, so it rounded up. A little, right? Yeah, 0.8. So 120.9, 120.8. I mean, if you want to nitpick on that, that's fine. But that's kind of giving you an idea that when you be more specific with a specific article, it's going to use mostly that. All this other stuff, I'm not sure if it came up with you know other choices, but as you can see, it's going to focus more so on what we give it with the URL. So that's a way of just pinpointing a little bit more so you don't have to get a lot of random references, okay? And last but not least, there's going to be all the templates. We've used a bunch of these here, but just kind of going over this, there's article rewriters, headlines, intros, snippets, real estate descriptions, semantic keywords, paraphrasing, brand statements. There's Facebook posts and ad targeting ideas, video descriptions, product descriptions, and I'm going to quickly scroll through so you can see some of these. I've done some videos in terms of, I think it was the pros and cons, the Facebook ones. And what I want to do is utilize one with video descriptions because why not? I like using video, of course. So brand name, give me one second. I just use Katab as an example and it will help you with your content marketing. Sure, let's do, let's just do marketers. 
Are you struggling with creating content that drives traffic and generates leads? Look no further than Katep. Our software is designed specifically to help marketers succeed in their content marketing efforts. Watch this video to learn more about how Katep can take your marketing strategy to the next level. That's just an example and you can do more variations. So let's say we want to do two more. Let's generate that. Looking for ways to improve your content marketing strategy. Kateb is here to help. Let's see. Content gives you tools and insights. You need to create high quality, engaging content that resonates with your audience. And the last one, look no further than Kateb. Let's see, is this? Okay, it's, it's similar. It starts off similar, but it's not the same too. If you highlight, you can do some stuff here in terms of proofreading, rewriting, enriching, completing, and plagiarism check. So that's just an example of how it works. There are going to be a lot of uh, different templates, as you saw. Probably could be a little bit more, in my opinion. I've just used so many uh, AI softwares that you know I've seen some that have a ton more. But overall, it's going to give you a good wide variety when it comes to writing your content and, of course, fact checking. So the big question is, could Teb worth it? Overall, I thought it was good. It it doesn't really have too many things that makes me super excited. I think the quality of the content is just good. I don't think it's very good. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's phenomenal. It's good enough to get the job done. I think the fact checking aspect is a very nice touch touch. However, there are going to be times where you need to fact check the fact checker. Some of the references, they can give you a ton of them. And of course, some of them you're probably not going to want to use like Reddit or Quora or anything else that's going to be unrelated. I think I saw like a Google Sites one on there once. So that's something to keep in mind. There are going to be some other uh, aspects of this. There have been a lot of new features and updates. They just said recently that they improve the content. So that's always good. You know, if they can keep doing that, it's going to get better and better. But like I said, at the time, it is a special deal. So I'm a little bit more lenient on the fact that they do have a roadmap. They're going to be increasing, hopefully, their features, the value, and what's going to be added in the future, where well, that's usually what happens with lifetime deals. So overall, I definitely think that it's at least a try. I don't think it's amazing or something super crazy out of this world, but I think it's good enough to get the job done. And if you want to test it out yourself. I will leave that link down below or at least click that to get the details for it. Because like I said, the special deal has different pricing, different perks, different features, and so on and so forth. So that's up to you to check out. Because like I said, I don't want to uh, talk about it and then it gets removed and then everyone's like, what's going on? It's not there anymore. But that's just how those deals work. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I know there's a lot more features and stuff going on, but I think this gave you a good demo and overview about how Kateb works. Thank you so much for watching. My name is James and I will see you in my next video.